Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game on the tabletop is Spectre the Board Game, 007. It is by Modiphius. It plays 20 to 45 minutes. It's for two to four players and ages 14 and up. And in the game Spectre, you're playing in the world of 007, but as one of the members of Spectre. Spectre is like the evil league of evil or like uh, the villains league in which one player is trying to be number one, and everybody else is going to be underneath them. And your objective in the game is to complete missions, is to move along the Spectre track here, gaining control of territories, utilizing resources, and improving yourself along the way. When the missions are over, and they're all done with, basically what's going to happen is you're going to check to see who's farthest along on this track. And the person who's farthest along is the winner of the game. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, with some unique little twists and turns along the way. Let's explain how to set the game up, how to play the game, and then my review. Setting up the game Spectre is quite easy. Take the board and place it within reach of all players. Then go ahead and take the three resource types and place them in the colored rectangles based on what color they are. Take the control markers from two to eight and place them in these circles outlined and displayed on the middle of the board. Go ahead and take each player's Spectre marker and place them on the start space. Take the mission cards and deal out a certain number based on the number of players, shuffle them, and then place On Her Majesty's Secret Service on top. The rest are going to be secret plans. These will get shuffled up and placed on the secret plan deck, and that's the whole board. The next thing you'll do is for each player, you're going to give them a player board of their choosing. You're going to give them agents, these are little markers right here, along with a villain and a henchman worker. These will be placed next to the player's board as well. On each player's board is going to be a certain number of these little markers that are going to indicate the spaces that they can upgrade to, which you'll place on each one that has a cost. And they're each going to be getting a secret plan and a marker indicating what number they are. One, two, three, or four. And you'll roll the die to see who the players are. They're gonna get that. Maybe you'll roll the die and just determine whoever has the highest number. It gets the best one and you can go around clockwise in that way. After everybody has the player board set up and the main board of the game set up, the game is ready to begin. Now, let's talk about how to play. As a quick note before we begin how to play, I just want to note that there are other things like you're going to have these die here for 007 and the 007 marker, and that some players may start with additional pieces in the game, which will be detailed in the rules. But as for playing the game, it's quite simple. There's a turn sequence that you're going to follow, and at the end of every round, you're going to draw a mission card, or you're going to see if you've completed a mission card and roll the dice here. And uh, once you get to the very last mission in the game, that will trigger the end game in which case you'll see who's farthest along on the track. To start with, number one is going to draw a mission card and read it out loud. So I'll take this card here, flip it over, and uh, it will tell you if you're able, uh, what you need to do to, com to complete it. And if you are able to meet that objective, there's gonna be a bid. And it'll tell you what resources that you can use when completing the bid. And it also tells you if you fail the mission, what will happen to each and every player. Uh, additionally, you'll be checking to see what everybody does as well. So this guy says number three that after bidding he'll recover, uh, recovers two of their re big bid resources. Number two says you'll take one resource at the start of the turn after the mission card is read. So this player will just instantly get one of these guys here of, of their choice. Uh, number one can re-roll one of these die here. And then number four is going to be able to advance one space in the Spectre track at the beginning of the round. So these are just things that you're going to do individually when, when starting the round off after reading this mission card. So read the mission card, everybody interacts with their little like, I don't know, little standy cards here. Then you're going to go in order and have players place out their villain pawns. On your turn, you're placing these villain pawns and you can place them on any space that has a circle. And that will allow you to interact with that space and it'll tell you what it does. Additionally, they can be placed on certain spaces on your player board. So here are the actions. Action one is a space, a Cape Canaveral. Basically, it's going to let you put a cube down on the space and gain two blue resources. The next space will let you place a cube down on three and a cube on three, seven, or eight. Um, and each of these spaces are numbered. The space over here is gonna let you put a cube down on four and you get to move your specter tracker marker if you pay an extra resource. Um, over here is going to let you put a cube on five and gain two gold resources. 
This one, yet again, placing cubes down in different areas and itself, cubes and itself, and then a cube on eight and gaining the other resources, which is going to be the gray one. And that's how all these work. You're basically either gaining resources and placing a cube, or you're placing a cube and placing another cube wherever you'd like, because you're trying to get area control in this game. So you place this down, it'll go in order, and everybody will place their villain markers down on the board. You can never place a marker in a space that already has a player's marker, unless you have a character that says otherwise. After you've done that, you'll move on and you'll start placing henchmen. And henchmen will start going down on the board, and you'll be interacting with their uh, markers in some way, shape, or form. If all the spaces are filled up and all the actions have been taken, then you'll be able to use your marker, <laughs> then instead, or as well as, you can place your marker on your player board. And each player board has a unique ability, uh, except there's also one that will let you unlock new abilities. So I can go ahead and say spend resources to unlock a scheme. You can place your henchman or your villain on that space, pay the resources, remove the token, and now for the rest of the game, it could be an instant that takes an effect, a passive, or an active ability that you can use when placing your villain or henchman on it, and it'll give you a unique twist to how your character works throughout the game. In fact, one character will actually make you end the game specifically with that character's location at the very end. So after you've moved your villains and then your henchmen and placed them on the board and basically placed a bunch of cubes on the board, doesn't be like, you know, you get putting cubes down based on um, which place you, sp which space you landed on and whatnot. And we'll just go ahead and detail a few cubes on the board here, even though this is not technically correct. <laughs> but then you're going to move on to checking for each majority. Okay. And majorities are going to make up um, all the different, uh, cubes that are placed on here whoever has the most so you'll go okay number two who has the most cubes and that's blue and blue is going to get this majority marker and then three would be no one four is going to be red five is going to be blue six will be green seven and eight will be yellow then uh, you're going to also gain the benefit for each of the majority bonuses some of them are going to be resources others will let you move cubes around etc etc once you've resolved all of the majorities as well as gain their benefits, then you're going to resolve the mission card. You'll check to see, did you complete the objective? Uh, meaning like, are there certain characters in certain areas? Are there characters on this card here? And if you did, you will get to bid. Each player is going to take a number of resources from their pool based on what they're allowed to bid. And they're going to go ahead and do this and reveal. And the player with the most points is going to win. Uh, if the mission succeeds, every player can flip over a secret plan if they have passed it and uh, collect the benefit for it, usually moving up on this track here, here. And the person who won fully will get to move up on the track. Basically, you're moving up on the track. And then people who also put it in bid are going to receive secret plans. This is the way you get more secret plans. These are like secret bonus objectives you can complete as the game goes on or at the very end of the game. After that, then uh, number one is going to roll these dice here. And this is going to determine where 007 goes. And based on the result, which you can check in the rulebook how that works, you'll place this down somewhere. It can be on the board here. It can remove cubes, basically scaring off uh, the agents from certain players based on where they're placed etc etc and then name plates are going to change you'll check to see the uh areas on the board in which the players are at and then the it'll switch from the farthest right to the farthest left so in this case yellow is the farthest on the right they would be number one then blue then green and finally red and then you'd rinse and repeat the round you continue going through it until you go through all the mission cards for each of the rounds and whoever is farthest on this track is then the winner. Only other little thing to talk about is that 007 can be placed on players and make them have difficulty in gaining certain schemes, make them increase in value, um, as well as flipping over certain cards for the player who plays him, making their cards worth less value, less specter points, but still be able to play them. There are certain red spaces on the board that will prevent you from moving any farther back, and also when you land on them, you'll be able to activate a scheme on your board for free 
and uh, there's other little things as far as the characters and how they interact and they have their own unique abilities. But otherwise, that's how you play the game Spectre. Spectre is a competitive game, but it has a little bit of a twist on it because you're all technically on the same side. You all want to complete these missions as you go through the round, and not completing them will usually end in a negative for most people, but not everyone. Some bad guys are going to actually wish to just to mess the mission up, to fail it on purpose because you might suffer more than they do. And as long as everyone else suffers more than you do, you're going to succeed. The game involves you trying to gain as much majority in each of the areas as possible. It's all about securing and controlling locations. You'll get majority bonuses. You're going to gain resources. Resources unlock schemes. Resources allow you to bid in order to win the missions, in order to progress yourself on this track here. And of course, some of them are going to require you, as far as these secret plans go, to pay these resources in order to gain even more benefit. You want to watch out for 007 and being first on the track here means rolling these and hopefully being able to decide where this is going to go and thusly allowing you to uh, mess other players over. There's always a benefit to giving a 007 marker to somebody and there's also a cost, meaning you're gonna have to tell him your secret plan and you'll basically have to flip it over and secret plans that are revealed are worth less, which is kind of uh, too bad, but also great when placing this on somebody else's space they control and just all the markers disappear. Failing missions is really cool too when you want to fail them and there's certain characters who specifically do because uh, maybe you have no way of controlling a certain area up until the point where this mission fails, these cards all these all these uh, cubes go away and now you have the opportunity to start placing cubes on there but yeah it's it's this cooperative light game but it's competitive right objectively you're just trying to get to the end of this track here moving around and being the farthest along being number one at the end of the game you want to be the um bad horse <laughs> you want to be the um i don't know what the other super bad guys you want to be thanos right against the avengers you want to have all the minions working for you, you don't want really to be working for anybody else. You're a leader, not a follower. This is the 007 universe. I know a few of these names. I know Emilio Largo, um, Raul Silvia, or Silva, uh, et cetera, et cetera. There's a bunch of them. There are these like five different characters you can choose from and they all play differently. They all have unique schemes, they all have unique ability, and they all have unique passives throughout the game. So each of them feel very, very different. I think that's the biggest thing about this game is that your characters are not going to feel the same as you play them. And when you switch playing with a new character, that would be the case as well. And each of them thematically makes sense for how the movies work. Now, I can't adjust all of them, but for the most part, I can say that yes, they're fit to play based on the theme. The board is nice and easy to recognize the spaces. These certain spaces represent locations you can go to, and these ones over here represent majority bonuses. Missions are easy to find where they are. They're a little bit complex as to how they work, and you have to look into the book to see that exactly, because I thought they were kind of like overly complex as far as just what the objective means like what's the circle mean okay the three means five okay three and five seven there's like some of them just were a little bit more i don't know just for some reason it just it didn't click around in my head how, how they worked secret plans made sense they were easy you spend three resources you gain two points and you can do this when you participate in the bid and mission succeeds easy peasy um and everything else makes sense as well moving along this board here being able to use your schemes and, uh, I mean, your main round is just placing on henchmen and villains, and then cubes fall on the board. I enjoyed this game. I do. I really enjoyed it a lot. Uh, it's it's a little bit longer, at least for us, than I'd say the, it says 20 to 45 minutes. I'd say it's closer on the 45 to 60 minute side. Um, uh, people are really mean in this game and really aggressive. You might really want to complete a mission and somebody's going to thwart you. This game is a social game. People are going to try to lie to you. They're going to try and sneak things on you and be like, oh yeah, I'll help you complete this. Or okay, I'll, I'll be the, if you place your marker on the mission, I'll place my marker next. And then they don't. And you're playing as bad guys, so that's going to be how the game works. But it left a sour taste in my mouth a few times where I'm like, okay, I'll do this, but you're going to do it right. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'm gonna, I have to do it. So we, we, will have to, we have to do it in order to succeed the mission. I'm like, that's true. So, all right, I'll do it. No, I don't want to do it. I'm going to fail the mission on purpose. And it's just like, you just made me lose half of my turn because I have to place only two guys out. And when I place one on a space that's basically a dead space, then I only get half. And so I, I, I started to realize how 
devious this game began become became as we played and as people understood their characters. Some characters will get their bid back regardless of whether or not uh, they spent it in order for the mission. Uh, some players are going to want missions to fail and it'll give them a benefit. And yeah, I guess that uh, understanding how the characters play and who's trying to tell you the truth is going to be uh, integral to this game. Quality of the components is excellent. The die are nice. They're thick and easy. Like to, they're, they're big dice. I like big dice. All the pieces are plastic here. All the cubes are plastic. Works very well. All the uh, cardboard is thick and I wouldn't worry about any problems with mishandling. Um, and the cards are nice as well and they feel good. It's probably like... Yeah, black core. But yeah, overall, all quality is good. If you like a game that's devious, deceptive, a little bit social, and a cooperative, light, more competitive game, then this is definitely one I would suggest taking a look at, especially if you're a big fan of the 007 universe. This does a good job of portraying what it feels like to be a bad guy. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Spectre, the board game, 007. You can also go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Our live stream is every Sunday at 6 30 p.m. PST, where we give away games and play games just like this one here. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to being the leader and you the follower next time.